Hey guys, it's Dave. Thanks for tuning in. As always, today I hope you're up for a good old-fashioned rant, as there's something I've been meaning to talk about with regards to Rocket Lab for a while now, and today is the day. Before we dive into our discussion, if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. Every new subscriber helps out so much. Very much appreciated if you already are a subscriber. And with that out of the way, let's dive right into it. Okay, so I was thinking today a little bit about Rocket Lab while I was driving, and one of the things that I was thinking about is that a lot of people out there seem to really mistake the scale and ambition the company really has and the founder Peter Beck really has. Like, they're not aiming for the little leagues here. They're very much aiming for the big leagues. And I think that's being missed by a lot of people and perhaps one of the reasons why they haven't been able to command quite a as lofty of a valuation as, say, uh, SpaceX, Relativity, some of the rest. And when I talk about valuation, I'm talking multiples, I'm not saying they should be worth the exact same that SpaceX is worth today. That would be ridiculous, of course. But uh, even Relativity worth like twice what Rocket Lab is, uh, ULA worth like twice what Rocket Lab is, SpaceX worth 100x what Rocket Lab is right now, I think. So, um, there's a lot of hype around some of these companies that seems to be ra lacking around Rocket Lab. Uh, I think there's this perception out there, they're like, oh, Rocket Lab's a pretty solid company, but they're just launching Electron. It's this little small rocket, like who cares, no big deal. That's not very ambitious. And I would say fair enough on that one, I suppose, although they are basically the only person in that market right now. And the Electron is really an amazing vehicle, in my opinion. Moving on to Neutron, similar story there. People think, well, whatever, you know, it's not that big of a vehicle. It's pretty modest. It's not going to be earth shattering or groundbreaking. Uh, it's smaller than a Falcon 9, so who really cares? You know, it'll launch, it'll be okay, but whatever, right? I think that's what a lot of people out there really believe, and I think they're really missing the point of Rocket Lab and what they're shooting for, because it's not just like, okay, being another space company, being whatever. They are fully planning to be one of the biggest space companies in the world in the future. And if you think about their market cap today sitting at around $2 billion, I'm not going to say this will happen overnight. It's going to take a long time and a lot of effort and hard work by the team. But they're putting those building blocks in place right now. And I think a lot of people are just not noticing or don't care because they're looking at the big shiny other rockets uh and you know rockets of course are the most exciting piece and they draw all the attention but you talk, you got spacex talking about building a city on mars you've got rock relativity talking about 3d printing entire rockets potentially on mars one day as well relativity was also talking about fully reusing their rocket that didn't happen next to that you have rocket lab with their neutron looking a bit Bit more modest of course i'll fully admit that i think they still have some very interesting and innovative designs things that they are going to be able to scale quite well and i think the rock it should do quite well and find its niche in the market of course i'm not saying it's going to dominate everything but i think for certain payload sizes it'll absolutely be a great choice but very much beyond that the vision of rocket lab coming an end-to-end -end space company uh flying under the radar a little bit. One thing you have to understand about space is even though launch is exciting, we're talking about perhaps a 10 billion total addressable market, we're talking 10x that for building out satellites. So when you look at a ULA, when you look at a relativity, maybe even a Firefly or some of these others, although Firefly is starting to play a little bit on the satellite and spacecraft side of things, uh, the total addressable market is not really that big. And now I know you can counter and say, well, Dave, yeah, but launch is set to grow massively over the next few decades. And yes, that may be true, but guess what you need if you're going to scale your launch massively? <laughs> you need payloads that those launches are putting into space. And what does that mean? That means companies like Rocket Lab building those payloads. So there is literally no way launch can scale faster than the satellite manufacturing industry 
and spacecraft industry because I mean not to be too obvious about it but like without those payloads there's no point in launching so yeah it's kind of going to be tied together and the TAM for the spacecraft manufacturing already like 10x higher than the launch uh, I think that ratio I don't see why it really ch would change. So if you consider launch going massively, that means that forces the payload manufacturing, satellite manufacturing to grow massively right alongside it. This is going to be incredibly important for Rocket Lab. And when I think about the full end-to-end -end vision of them manufacturing everything, building everything themselves in-house, bringing all those components together, all those pieces together that they've been doing very methodically under the table. We're talking the solar panels with Solero, the star trackers, the reaction wheels, the separation systems, the mission management software, uh, basically everything, the carbon composites, the satellite buses in-house, they're going to bring on payload next, which seems to be like the final piece they really need. Um, slowly building those pieces together to be able to build out their massive constellation like SpaceX is doing right now themselves. So let's play a quick clip of Peter Beck in my interview with him uh, the other week, and I think uh, it was very interesting, very telling, and maybe people aren't really reading enough into it. Now let's take a look. That we took on, you know, the, the capstones and, and VADAs and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of stepped up as being a, a major sub and a major program for the MDA Global Star. And then now we're the prime contractor for, you know, a large SDA mission. So you can see the trajectory in an extraordinarily short time frame of where we're trying to take that, um, that, that space systems business. But I think, I think the, the, the bigger thing to really think about is, and I think one of the, one of the analysts on the, on, on the earnings actually asked a really, really great question. Uh, Kai, he was, he was like, well, you're seeing Raytheon you know, back out of of kind of these large SDA programs and some of these mm -hmm. some of these programs as being prime and focusing on co you know component supply, and you know and and you can name a number of primes that are sort of doing that. And I would say, what we're witnessing here is a total inflection point of the space industry. You know, the the, the large you know it's a, you go back just a few years ago, it would be absolutely unheard of one of those large primes to 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 be backing out of being a prime and wanting to be a sub on some of these things and the era of cost plus fixed fee is 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 dying right mm -hmm. uh, that that is when, when you have another company that comes along and says yeah we'll do this for a firm fixed price we'll absolutely deliver it on time we're incentivized to deliver it on time um and you know we can we can guarantee that schedule because we have all these components internally we're not relying on being an integrator of everybody else's stuff, we have them internally, so we you know, we can actually meet this delivery, especially in an environment where delivery is more important than anything else right now. So you know what what you're seeing is just a total inflection point um, in the space industry in, in in the way it's it's all happening. And look, I've, I've, I'm on the record of saying I think the large space companies of the future are going to be the companies that are vertically integrated, they have their own rocket, they have their keys to space, and literally customers come to them and just ask for, I want this service or I want this capability on orbit. And we're, we're really starting to see that model happen. Like with the Victor's Hayes mission, the customer came to us, they bought a service essentially. We build the satellite, it's full of our components, we're launching it, we even operate it on orbit. Right. They've just bought a capability. And and then you see all the big primes kind of stepping out of these, these cost plus programs and you see folks like us stepping in. So the large space companies of the future uh, are going to be the SpaceX or Rocket Labs, um, in my opinion. And because when, when you have the keys to space and you have all of that and that kind of vertically integrated capability, like who's going to sign a cost plus deal with ambiguous delivery time frames and no idea of cost? It's just we're in a different world now. OK, so a few things there. Uh pretty clear to me he was talking about Rocket Lab basically out competing Raytheon which if you're not familiar with them they're a 140 billion dollar market cap company Rocket Lab sitting at $2 billion market cap and Raytheon basically throwing in the towel saying we can't compete anymore as a prime. We're giving up. We're just going to manufacture the, some subcomponents and try to sell them to the likes of the rocket labs of the world and others. So 
massively telling that Rocket Lab is able to push, and I'm not saying they're doing this alone, obviously there's a lot of other industry factors at play, but this is where the industry seems to be going, the full end-to-end -end stack, Rocket Lab playing a big part of it. Uh, yeah, they <laughs> they basically outcompeted Raytheon right now, at least it seems, in being a prime, which is absolutely insane. If you think about the market cap of Raytheon, sure, they're doing a lot of other things as well as the spacecraft, but still massive room to grow and in those same sentences Peter Beck talking about Rocket Lab being one of the biggest space companies of the future saying I think the big space companies of the future will be end-to-end -end. they'll do it all they'll build satellites they'll launch them they'll operate those satellites from space and provide the services and data to customers down on earth and in space putting Rocket Lab in that group of the big space companies of the future alongside SpaceX. Now, I'm not saying they'll ever catch SpaceX in market cap, nor do they even really need to try. Even if they somehow got into the same league, the same ballpark, we're talking massive growth. If you look at some of the other large space companies of today, maybe the Northrop Grumman's of the world, the Lockheed Martins, uh, there is massive room for growth and saying that he sees Rocket Lab as being being one of the big space companies of the future, I think just the scale of that in comparing Rocket Lab's current size to what the current size is of the current big space companies should be extremely bullish and there's just so much room to grow. So yes, Neutron is not a massive vehicle. Yes, it's not as shiny and exciting as maybe a Starship, but that is one very small piece of the puzzle that nobody else other than SpaceX and Rocket Lab really seem to be focusing on right now. Uh, you look at Stoke, obviously trying to build a fully reusable vehicle of their own. Way too early for them to even think about getting into the space system side of things. They're not building satellites. They're really all in on just trying to get this rocket off the ground. You look at relativity, again, all in on trying to get this rocket off the ground as well. A lot of other space companies very focused on rockets. These newcomers, Firefly, the rest, ABL. Um, who else is really building the full stack right now except for Rocket Lab and SpaceX? It's nobody, but I think a lot of people are just more excited by the likes of a Stoke and a Relativity than Rocket Lab, which kind of gets forgotten. But you're going to see the power of the full end-to-end -end stack in the next decade, I think, and Rocket Lab has a big lead on that front compared to anyone who's not named SpaceX. So that's my little rant for today. I hope you found it entertaining and interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below if you agree that people aren't paying enough attention to the non-launch side of things like I do, and the fact that Rocket Lab is actually chasing a much larger total addressable market than just the launch side of things, like some of these other new companies. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider hitting subscribe and like if you haven't already because it really does help out a lot. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.